Hey, what's going on, y'all? My name is Dakota. Thanks for watching Tennessee Ray. Today we're out at Southern Precision Tooling Range checking out something that both of these rifles have in common. Yeah, they've got the same scope mount, but we're not talking about the scope mount today. We're talking about the triggers. Both of these guns have the Rise Armament Rave 140 trigger, specifically the flat blade. So we're going to be checking those out. I really love the Rise Armament triggers. Before we get into it, 100% transparency. Yes, I am an affiliate for Rise Armament. However, I have been running their triggers for years before I became an affiliate recently. That being said, let's go ahead and look at them and uh, let's take some measurements, put them on a trigger gauge and see how they pull. Let's go ahead and get into it. Not here. Pick that up. All right, y'all, we're back from the range checking out the Rise Armament Rave 140 triggers. These triggers are phenomenal. Uh, I'm just going to say it out front. I have a ton of time behind these triggers. I have a ton of rounds down range with these triggers. And as you've already seen, I have two of them. So let's go ahead and talk about the trigger pull, the, the poundage, all that stuff. Let's go ahead and roll that portion, and then we'll come back and we'll keep talking about it. All right, we got the Wheeler Engineering tr trigger pull gauge out here today. We're going to check out the pull weight on these Rise Armament Rave 140s. All right, so I'm going to try to pull straight back to the rear on the bottom of the shoe. All right, I got a three pounds, 3.9 ounce. Reset that one. Oh well. All right, let's pull this one again. I got a three pounds, 3.2 ounce that time. And final pull here, three pounds, 1.4 ounce. So for an average pull across three pulls of three pounds, 2.8 ounces. All right. That's that one. Now these are the same trigger in two different guns. So let's see how consistent they are. Now this one's dirty. So I don't expect it to pull quite as light. Three pounds, 8.9 ounces. Three 
three pounds, 12 ounces. That one pulled at four pounds, nine ounces. I think I think I did something wrong there. I'm gonna delete that one and try another one. There's four pounds, 4.6 ounces. So an average of three pounds, 13 ounces there. Not much difference between the two. Like I said, this one's a lot more dirty, so it's probably gonna pull a little heavier. Uh, I keep my competition gun pretty clean. So really not bad. Uh, these triggers usually pull about three and a half, and, and that's not bad. But what's phenomenal about these triggers is there's no pre-travel. It's straight up take up. You're, you're there at the wall, it's take up to the break, and then it's reset. And it's reset to the wall. There's no pre-travel, there's no over-travel, there, there's, there's no excessive reset. It's all the action, all the movement is just what's required on these triggers. And that's pretty awesome when you think about how affordable these triggers are. Uh, they're about 150 beans. And the even more awesome part about that is these triggers, like I said, they're 150 beans, but they aren't cheap by any means. Very affordable, but not cheap. And what I mean by that, the internals, so the hammer, the sear, all that stuff, they're all made out of S7 tool steel and they're nitride coated. So they're gonna last forever. They're gonna, if you break S7 tool steel, I mean, that's what bolt carriers are made out of. A lot of high-end bolt carriers are made out of S7 tool steel. So they're gonna last a long time. Here's another awesome thing. Talking about the, the materials used, instead of just using some cheap, real, real thin sheet metal to, to make the cassette, the, the, the frame that actually holds everything together on these drop-in triggers, the Rise Arm at Rave 140 uses a single block of aluminum that's milled out. It's 6160 aluminum that is milled out to fit the internals inside of it. It's not just sheet metal that's folded and crimped and, and pinned together or welded together. It's one solid piece of aluminum that's been milled out. That is gonna be extremely more robust and uh, more you're gonna get more longevity out of it than those sheet metal ones that are that are just bent up. So on top of that, added value in your 150 beans for these things, they come with the anti-walk pins. So they've got the, the pin that has the two screws, the one that goes in each side, and that is a really good added value because it saves you from having to spend another eight, ten dollars on some anti-walk pins. They come with it right out of the box. And you're gonna need those, by the way, uh, if you've never run a drop-in trigger before or a cassette-style trigger like this before. You're gonna need those anti-walk pins. They don't have the amount of pressure, spring pressure, against the pin like uh, a regular mil-spec trigger does. So I've been running these triggers for a long time, like I said, and the first Rave 140 I bought was in my first competition rifle that I built, uh, specifically for competitions. Man, I probably have tens of thousands of rounds to that thing. I have. I have put a ton of rounds behind that trigger. And then when I built this 13.7 lower originally about a year and a half ago, and then eventually SBR'd it and put a 12.5 upper on it. When I built this lower, I put a Rise Armament Rave 140 in it because I knew of the reliability. I knew of the consistency. I mean, this, this trigger is phenomenal, especially when you think about the price that you're getting it at. Uh, they're, they're honestly hard to beat. I, I don't know of any other trigger company on the market that's putting out a quality drop-in trigger like this at the same price point that somebody can say that they've never had a malfunction that was due to the trigger that was a light primer strike. Never. Not one time in all the rounds that I have put through these Rise Armament Rave 140s have I ever had a light primer strike. They're solid. Absolutely solid. So that rolls into the question of do I recommend these? 100% uh, I recommend these. And for those of you that are new to my channel or have never watched my channel before, that's something that I'm big on. Uh, like I said, I'm an affiliate for Rise Armament, but I ran their triggers for a real long time before I ever became an affiliate for them. I ran their triggers before I ever even started this YouTube thing. So that just tells you how long I've been running their triggers. I'm not gonna represent a company I'm not gonna push or 
uh, do any advertising for a company that I don't 100% believe in the product that I'm pushing. And there's even companies that I'll represent one or two products, but I won't represent their entire lineup, right? So I will tell you with 100% certainty, these Rise Armament Rave 140s are good to go. I've got a 434, it's good to go as well, but uh, we'll do a review on it at a different time. Drop down, check out the links in the description below. Uh, one of them is going to be to this Rise Armament Rave 140 if you're interested in checking it out, which if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in checking it out. Then uh, use my link, it'll help the channel out. There's going to be other links down in the description as well. Those are all affiliate links. They all help me out. They help me pr uh, produce more content because they help the channel out. So if you're interested in checking out one of these Rise Armament Rave 140s, you definitely need to. Uh, quit delaying. The quality for the amount of money that you're going to spend is well worth it. Uh, I don't recommend very many triggers, but I absolutely recommend these. Go check it out. I appreciate you guys tuning in. My name is Dakota. Make yourself better today. We'll see you.